I'm here with Professor Steve Gonzalez of the Phoenix School of Law. He is currently in New York as a delegate of the Baha'i International Community to the 11th United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. The theme of this year's Permanent Forum is the Doctrine of Discovery, but a lot of time is also being spent on the upcoming World Conference in 2014. Now my first question, Steve, is what has the Baha'i International Community done at this year's forum? Well, good morning, Dan. It's been very uh, exciting to be here at the United Nations for the uh, permanent forum of the uh, indigenous nations. This is the 11th annual meeting, and uh, it's been very exciting to, to see all that's happening here. The, uh, the forum has uh, uh, been talking about the uh, doctrine of discovery, but in particular, the Baha'i international community has been involved particularly in the side events. Uh, the side events are informal gatherings, sometimes semi-formal discussion groups, panel presentations. Um, it's, it's a time when people can really go into depth on the various issues being discussed. Uh, so we've been attending the side events and also one of the more exciting developments this year uh, with the Baha'i International Community's presence at the forum has been the development of a photo essay compilation in which we have offered as a platform uh, to the attendees who come from all over the world, indigenous nations from every continent and virtually every nation, to come in and have uh, photos taken and to answer a couple questions about uh, what they uh, can learn from the forum and what they can contribute and take back to their own community. Uh, that, uh, that's been a, an exciting development. The photographs are beautiful and the, uh, the, the contributions that they've made, I think, are, is very exciting. Uh, and that's going to be uh, posted, I understand, on YouTube. Great. Uh, I see that uh, another one of the questions uh, is, what can indigenous peoples and cultures uh, bring to the world to make it a better place? And I'm wondering what, what your impression is of, of that issue. What do indigenous peoples bring to the world? Well, I, I think there's so much uh, uh, that indigenous communities can contribute to this growing global tapestry. Uh, my understanding of the Baha'i writings uh, is there's an overall principle of unity and diversity and another principle of the oneness of humanity. So within that context, though, the various cultures, nations, and other groups of the earth can all contribute something. Uh, because of the vagaries of history, uh, the uh, it's time now I think is blossoming for indigenous communities to be able to realize how much they can contribute uh, there are so many different qualities and uh, as closeness to the earth for example that uh, that they can contribute so those are some of the things that uh, that I think we've been focusing on and specifically what sorts of qualities would you say or what sort of uh, perspectives uh, do indigenous peoples bring to uh to the world? Well, one example, I think, is the um, way in which Indian and indigenous, uh, wherever part of the world you're talking about communities, integrate their spiritual beliefs and spiritual uh, 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 qualities into everyday living. It's not just a matter of one day a week or certain hours or during cer certain activities, but it's, a, it's an ever-present mindfulness of living every day close to spiritual principles, or at least striving as best they can to do so. Uh, that would be one example. Uh, another example, I think, is the emphasis in indigenous communities on uh, respect for elders, on a place for everyone, for the youth, for the children, um, the importance of consensus building um, in consultation, Indigenous communities tend to emphasize uh, working together until there's full agreement and consensus uh, rather than uh, majority vote or something like that, although that certainly is a principle. Uh, the, the emphasis is on bringing together points of view and working out some sort of unity and agreement. Uh, now, you, you mentioned that one of the principles is that there's a place for everyone. Uh, I'm wondering, how does that find expression at, in a venue like the United Nations? Uh, well, there's several examples that uh, I think have, uh, have been uh, prominent here at this particular session. Uh, one example is working with the youth. Uh, for example, the Canadian mission to the United Nations brought together youth from all over indigenous communities 
in Canada and uh, brought them together to discuss and to work on a project. The project in particular is the uh, creation of a video on the different indigenous communities, the youth, and this video is going to be used in instruction available through schools throughout Canada. Uh, these are young people, energetic, eager to learn and eager to share. Uh, they've stressed the importance of learning about their culture and their history. Uh, they're joyful and happy, and they tend to uplift the spirit of everybody they're around. Uh, another example is uh, the contribution of women's groups to the forum. Uh, uh, one side event I attended uh, depicted how women's groups in Central and Latin America have been working on literacy projects to increase the level of literacy in some of the remote areas of their countries. Also to help with health care and with uh, education in general. Uh, that's been very exciting to see the, uh, the dedication and the sacrifices of these really heroic women. Um, I think one of the more prominent and exciting developments at this particular session is the emphasis on and, and awareness on the importance of uh, the disabled community, the physically challenged. This is something that um, is going to take time, but people are working very hard here at this particular session of the UN to talk about how we can uh, uh, improve the worldwide services, um, change the architecture, change the dialogue and the conversation so that there is more and more participation and contribution by the disabled community. Uh, it's, this is very exciting to see uh, uh, happen here. That's wonderful. Uh, in fact, one of the photo essays put together by the Baha'i International Community highlights the efforts of some of these indigenous peoples with disabilities. Uh, I would encourage our viewers to take a look. Uh, but in the meantime, I'd like to thank Professor Gonzalez for taking the time to meet with us and share some of his perspectives on these very important issues. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. My pleasure.